Welcome to the prototype world of tomorrow. They say the 21st century truly began the day the City of Progress was finished. A domed metropolis of the world's greatest minds, built on the swamplands of Central Florida. Here, in this self-styled city of the future, 50,000 temporary residents live, work, and occasionally die. And now, based on the short story by Charles Dickens, The Signal. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born this Christmas day. To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Thank you for joining us for the City of Progress's annual Countdown to Christmas audio presentation, featuring your favorite public domain Christmas carols. Don't forget to join us for the annual Candlelight Processional. Tickets are available now by chiming the Progress Interfaith Cathedral. This is Entry 206, December 24th. <sighs> Something's happened that I think is related to what I've been researching. I wanted to record everything while it was as fresh in my memory as possible. What I just witnessed was either an unintended breakthrough or something far more sinister and quite frankly alarming. It's about the Orac system. It, you know, let me start from the beginning. Annie Moore, my sister, and Tim Less, my business partner and Annie's boyfriend, were visiting Aunt Carol. She works for the municipal monorail system in the recesses under the city. So, they were headed deep under Progress's infrastructure on a very... interesting visit. Hello? Hello down there? I'm not sure she heard you. Hello? The problem wasn't the volume, Tim. See that little booth there? That's where she works. She's probably in there now. I'll send her a chime. She works here? Like, all the time? Twelve-hour shifts. Eee. This is a little... Dreary. I was going to go with dank, but same. Disconsolate. Woebegone. Lugubrious. <laughs> nice. It opens up to the sky, at least. Better than being completely underground. What? I said it's better than being complete. Never mind. Wow. You can hop right on the monorail from here if you wanted. Yes, but why? I don't know. Like a big train robbery getaway chase scene, maybe? Are you planning on holding up a monorail? Oh, no, no. I'd, uh, <laughs> I'd be the sheriff. Or perhaps U.S. Marshal in this situation. Look, down there. There's Aunt Carol. She just came out of the booth. Hello, down there! Step up on that platform over there. She can see you better. Oh. Hello down there! What? I'm still waving, Annie. Uh, now what? Ask her how we get down. Um, how do we get down? Across the catwalk. There's a staircase. A staircase. Did you get that? Look, over there. Tim and Annie stepped out onto the upper catwalk that ran over the small booth below. Their description of the place was accurate. It was a deep shaft, a long rectangle cut straight into the ground, with tall concrete walls on each side. It was dark, damp, and every noise seemed to echo into infinity. They said you could feel the vibrations of every monorail on the line. Ew! What? I touched the mold on the wall. Gross! 
Hey, at least it's green and red. How does that make it better? It's festive. They took this spiral staircase down to the small booth below. How would you describe the smell? Earthy? Swampy? I mean, it sounds like you're just describing good scotch. Stand still. Hey, 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 why are you wiping it on my shirt? You said it was festive. I'm getting you into the holiday spirit. There you are. I'd almost given up on you for the day. I thought you said five o'clock. Yes, we didn't realize how far down you worked, Aunt Carol. I don't suppose you get many visitors here. No, I don't. I would have... She would have what? Shush. Why is she looking up at that platform? (sighs) Sorry, I lost my train of... (laughs) Train. It's cold out here. Come inside and, and you can tell me about what you need. The booth? It wasn't much. A pair of rooms. On one side was a kitchenette. Stove and sink and table with two chairs. One chair was clearly more worn than the other. The other side had a sitting area with an oversized computer console that seemed out of scale with the rest of the space. A monitor mounted near the bottom of the wall displayed a crackling fireplace on a four-second loop. Well, this is... lonely. I think Tim meant homey. No, he was right the first time. Um, I'll fix this tea. Oh, would you like tea? I forgot to ask. Ouch. Uh, Yeah, uh, tea would be fantastic. It's been a while. You didn't come to Thanksgiving this year. No, I didn't get the time off. The monorail must run, you know. That means me here. Why did you elbow me? She was asking you a question. Uh, she was asking us a question and just happened to be staring into me like I was some sort of damned Nietzschean abyss. Well, the abyss should respond back for polite questions about tea. At the end of the kitchen was a large window, nearly the entire wall of the booth, which looked out onto the track. She's staring up at that platform again. That's her job. Uh, excuse me. Yes, uh, Tim? Yeah, is that your job? Don't you know? No, that's why I asked. Yes, you see that light up there, just a few feet into the tunnel? It's a danger light for the monorails. It's not on. No, it's not. Have I... have I seen you before? Aunt Carol, you met Tim last year at... No, down here, or up there. Yeah, I was standing up there. Yes, I know, but but before that... You haven't, Tim. I've never been down here. Right. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. Uh, so, you, you didn't come for the tea, but here it is anyway. Oh, just a moment. Ugh, monorail orange again. So, you need help with something? Yes, you said you might be able to help with a costume for Tim. He's in the candlelight processional this year. Shepard? Wise man. Casper Melchior or Balthazar? Um, the... the one with the the turban? Melchior. Last year's Melchior was taller. Let me see. Tim, would you put this on? Ah, yeah, this will be easy enough. Let me mark some measurements while you're both here. Thanks so much. Not a problem. It will give me something to occupy myself for an hour. I'm frequently looking for those. Uh, let me get some safety pins. Uh, your job here, it it doesn't take up your time? Not really, no. Especially since they installed the new ORAC system. ORAC? It's a predictive AI that's supposed to monitor the entire transportation network. You see that console over there? That's it. Let me check the message. Monorail Rose has a passenger keeping the door open so it's running 90 seconds late. It's going to make up the difference by reducing the stop time over the next six stations. We would have done all that manually before ORAC. See, there's almost no work. To be honest, a child could do it. Well, if it wasn't for the vigilance. That's it? It doesn't seem like you need an AI program for that. Hmm, I didn't explain it right. The delay hasn't happened yet. ORAC is predicting a delay and making up for it in advance. Doesn't leave much for me to do. Except when it does, uh, which is sometimes. 
I find hobbies, you understand. Right now I'm teaching myself some ancient languages. Oh, really? Like Latin and Greek? No, COBOL and Fortran. It helps to pass the time. Hold your arm out. Let me check the message. What message? Aunt Carol? What? Didn't it, Annie? Sorry, I, I must have heard something. Now then, arm up. We'll take off, let's say, five centimeters. Other one. Are you still at Landkeeper Agro, Annie? Still giving tours. Well, that's something. And Eve? Well, Eve and I have gone into business together as private investigators. Ah, ow! Ow! Uh, excuse me. Slip of the finger. Fifteen centimeters. <clears throat> okay, then. Excuse me. Leave the costume here. I'll hem it and maybe take it out in the middle a little. That's probably for the best. Hey. Are you sure it's not an imposition? You have the time? Nothing but. I'll have to get my sewing machine. Can you come back in two days to pick it up? Of course. What time? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'll be here. But don't come down the way you came. No one comes that way. Here, there's a lateral elevator right outside the door. I've got a spare key you can use. Okay, then. Tim, can I ask you something? Sure. You stood on the platform above the light, and you waved your arm, and you said, Hello, hello down there. I said something like that. You said that. Why did you? Well, you were down here, and I was saying hello, so the combination made sense at the time. TBH, even on thorough analysis, I'm not seeing why it doesn't to you now. No other reason? No. The words didn't... You didn't hear them? No. The lateral elevator is outside the door, down the hallway about five meters, on the left. You can use it when you come back, and, and next time, Tim, please, please don't call out. It was the next morning before I heard about what happened. Annie and Tim were meeting me for breakfast at a restaurant which was Tim's, and only Tim's, choice. Surely there is something on the menu you can live with, Eve. It's only one page. And a full quarter of it is dedicated to snack cakes that can be breaded and deep fried. Well, it is the holiday menu. I usually order one of the hash brown combinations. Which one? The one with candied bacon, or the one with... Ugh. Crushed peppermint sticks. Bacon, it's pretty good. Bonnie! Tim! Be nice. To call this place a dive would be an insult to the men and women who win gold medals in the event every four years. How long have you been working on that one? Since about eight this morning. Happy holidays, Tim! Annie! Merry Christmas! Eve! Good luck! Yeah, Merry Christmas, Bonnie. Ah, I love how holly and jolly the place is. <laughs> Isn't it, though? Yes, the dozen or so animatronic Santas just put me in the mood for spirits. And that one? Since I came in. What? Why does Tim get to be the funny one? So, what will it be? The Timmy? I'll have the eggnog omelet. I mean, tis the season. Hash browns with candied bacon for both of us. I'll get that right in for you three. Annie and Tim told me about meeting with Aunt Carol. 
Tim had laughed off the whole thing as another one of Progress's quirky residents, and... Though it's true the town is filled with... eccentrics, Annie and I knew Carol, and quirky wasn't a word you'd use to describe her. She never talked much about her work. I always had the impression it was important on some level, but not particularly flashy or interesting. Come to think of it, that was Aunt Carol. She approached life with a mm, set methodology that bordered on obsessive. One holiday, she'd invited Annie and I over for dinner. And when we arrived, she then showed us the flowchart she had created to schedule every dish, each perfectly timed for its entrance and exit from the oven. They were flawlessly executed from an engineering standpoint, but tasted like shoe leather and library paste. Growing up, Christmas gifts were always things you could build. You know, model trains and such. And most of the time, she then proceeded to open the boxes and build them herself while we watched, silently. It's funny, the things you remember. Anyway, Tim was joking about the encounter, but I could tell Annie didn't find the whole thing as humorous. Still, it wasn't until Tim excused himself that I saw Annie's face drop. Eve, you know Aunt Carol's always been... Particular? Sure. I, I think something's wrong. You mean she's in trouble? No. With her. She's not acting right. Well, to be fair, she never really acted... It's worse than it was before. Looking out the window at the signal light. That's her job. It wasn't on. Ever. I think it might have been disconnected. And she kept looking at Tim like she knew him? Annie, she does. She met him at Thanksgiving. Look, it's hard to describe. It was just unsettling. Okay, so you're saying that she's not the person you want with her hand on the progress monorail kill switch? I didn't even think about it like that. I was just thinking about her. Well, did you tell Mom? I don't want to worry her. What's she going to do? You know Aunt Carol always liked you growing up? Annie. Tomorrow you can pop in any time with Tim. Annie. You were her favorite. Everyone knew it. Just see what she has to say. Scope it out a little. That's what you do now, right? Here, take the key. You've got a perfect built-in excuse. See what you think. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe. There was no saying no to my sister. I knew it. She knew it. Hell, even Tim knew it. And he was an idiot. So, I was on my way into the depths of the city to visit my aunt. I heard the bells on Christmas Day They roll familiar carols play And wild and sweet the words repeat I'd never been to Aunt Carol's work before. She had an apartment in the dome, but if Tim and Annie's description was correct, I'm not sure when she was ever even there. They'd moved all the monorail signalmen to 12-hour on, 12-hour off shifts when they'd installed the ORAC system. <sighs> it was like hell had frozen over at AKIP when it happened. Liam Crawford wanted that contract, and I saw him fire people who mentioned it in front of him on four different occasions. Anyway, I made Tim come with me. Not for moral support, just to cover for the idea that my only purpose was picking up his wise man costume. And no, the irony wasn't lost. Behold, 
saw the star in the east. Behold, we saw the star in the east. Behold, we saw the star in the east. Tim, what are you doing? I'm working on my line. Ah. Wait. The star would have been in the west. What? The wise men are from the east. Yes. And the star is in the east. Yeah. So why did they go west? You know, I, I just read the lines. Monorail surveillance platform 12. This way. It's right down here. Oh, you didn't undersell it. No, it's something, all right. What Tim and Annie hadn't mentioned was the wind that whipped over the opening of the... Well, I guess it was a canyon. Even if it was a man-made one of slick, straight concrete. It made the whole place sound... empty. I know Annie's a bit overclocked about the whole situation, but really, Carol is at her worst a little fastidious about her job. You know, I wouldn't even say that. I'd go like, medium idious. Well, you didn't grow up with her around. You're right. Before two days ago, I'd only ever said about three things to the woman. Hello, goodbye, and uh, pass the cranberries. But her being off kilter is basically her being good at her job. And by that standard, she's probably the safest person employed by the City of Progress monorail system. I'm here to make Annie feel better, okay? Eve! Uh, And Tim! Uh, Well, come inside. See? I didn't call out her wave. What? Uh, That was a thing she asked. You can remember and follow instructions. Congratulations. Well, you don't have to be like that about it. I'm sorry, that wasn't sarcasm. It took Williams and Kilburn three years to build a computer that could do that. Come inside. Uh, To be honest, I was expecting your sister, Eve. Oh, she couldn't come. And, you know, I I hadn't seen you. Wow, I'm I'm, I'm glad you stopped by. I'll make tea. Uh, Tim, I have your costume almost finished. I just need to check the neckline. Have a seat. Oh, Aunt Carol? Uh Uh-huh. This is the Orac Terminal? That's right. Haven't you seen one before? Oh, only at a trade show, not in the wild. Ah, this must really be a thrilling day for you. I'm surprised you can contain your excitement. Monorail Sienna is indefinitely delayed. That means a breakdown. An automated tow vehicle has been dispatched. Oh, sorry, I'm confused. That whole process is automated? Yes, since the ORAC was installed. You don't need to confirm or verify or anything? No. So what is it that you do? Well, I... uh, Let me get the tea. It used to be different. Well, before ORAC. (laughs) You know... I had so many wonderful opportunities in my career. Chances to to really make something of myself. You always think about the path not taken. I certainly didn't think the path would end here. Oh, it doesn't matter anymore. That was a lifetime ago. I made my bed and it's too late to make another one. Eve, whatever you do, don't do the same. But I'm here, in progress, and that's something, I suppose. Um, (laughs) You didn't come here for this. Let me get that costume. Aunt Carol? This is what she was doing before. Aunt Carol, what are you looking at? You didn't hear it, did you? Hear what? The bell. The one on the ORAC system. I didn't think you could hear it. Oh, boy. The bell didn't ring. No, it it didn't. It rang earlier. Yes, it rang earlier, but not now. I can always tell when it rings out loud and when it... When it what? Doesn't. Here's your costume, Tim. Well, I suppose we should probably Uh, be... That light in the tunnel, uh, what does it do? That? That's the danger light. It signals if something or someone is on the track. It's been disconnected since they installed ORAC. 
Really? They took out the fail-safes? They thought they didn't need them. So it doesn't flash? It's disconnected. So, uh, thanks for the costume. But, but there was an accident. A skirt, skirt? Yes. A year ago, about. It was here. I was on duty. I can't see much of the sky from here, but I could see the moon that night, right, right up there. She pointed to the sliver of open air you could see from the booth. The ORAC system was a few months old at that point. The monorails were being taken back to the barn for the end of the day. The conductors were cocky, if you ask me. We still had conductors then. Monorail Olive had just passed my window, and without knowing it, the conductor had switched tracks over to the far one. I never figured out why. I, could, I couldn't tell in the dark, and the system didn't catch it. Monorail Midnight was headed the other direction. He didn't have his lights on. Playing chicken in the tunnel, I guess. They collided head on. The monorail was empty, right? Except for the conductors. That's horrible. Did they... They didn't die from the collision. Monorail Midnight caught on fire. And of all the spots in all of progress, for some reason, there wasn't any fire suppression. Oh, oh, wait, none? There was a vent to the surface above them. And it became a flu. Is that tight? Exactly. I, I stepped out of the booth and I could feel the air pulling me towards the mouth of the tunnel. I could see the fire as it burned in the middle of the darkness. I couldn't move. I looked at the light. I called for help, but it was too late. Both men were dead. They had the line back up and running in 36 hours. The investigation said it was conductor error. And then there were no more conductors. Now Oruk is in charge. That sounds like a terrible, terrible, terrible accident. Yes, it was. One moment. Monorail Ruby incoming. The red-striped monorail screamed by the booth. Tim almost jumped like a cat being hit with a bucket of water. <gasps> it didn't even phase Aunt Carol, who clicked through the reading and checked the instruments with a precision I've only seen in auto-manufacturing robots. Tim. Put the costume on so we can check the neckline. I'm sure it's fine. <sighs> it's loose. They'll see your t-shirt underneath. Yeah, but a safety pin under the collar might be yeah, the easiest solution. Tell Annie the costume is finished with yeah, a minor backstage modification. Uh, just hold on, I'll chime her myself. Thanks so much. Not a problem. And let her know next year I prefer a Christmas carol. Where are you coming to see the show? I mean, not to brag, but I do have a line. I requested leave for the premiere. I haven't heard back. Uh, let her know. Annie will slide you a ticket on the DL. Uh, yep, yeah, that, that would be fine. Well, thanks again. Uh, yes, it was great seeing you, Aunt Carol. It was great to see how well you seem to be doing down here. Am I doing well? So, thanks again. Uh, uh, aren't you? I was. I, I was doing well. But now I'm a little bothered. You don't say. Is, is there something I could do? Come tomorrow, Eve. I'll, I'll tell you then. Keep that key. Not now. Um, come tomorrow. We left the way we came. One costume and about a dozen questions heavier. If the purpose was to give Aunt Carol a clean bill of mental health, I don't think the mission was an unqualified success. Still, the way she performed her routine, she seemed like the safest person in the entire city to be running the monorail system, especially with the human element eliminated. It just didn't seem right for her to spend all her time in that cavern. Maybe it was just getting to her. Tim and I took the people mover back into the heart of the city and up to the Civic Center where the rehearsal for the pageant was happening. 
excuse me. Angels. Angels. Hey, can everyone quiet down? Hark, damn it. <sighs> Thank you. Seraphim on the risers. Cherubim backstage waiting for your cue. Archangels downstage. Gabriel? Where's Gabriel? Coming. Tim, you're late and you're not in costume. I, I got it right here. Go back and get changed. We're running the entire annunciation before Director Mountain gets here and then you're on. Gabriel for the last time. Coming. How many of Tim's friends did you drag into this show? We needed more guys. Hi, Eve. Bo? Sorry. Uh, fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. That was the last scene. Oh, um, uh, arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Try again. <sighs> Joseph, thou son of David, uh, fear not to take unto thee uh, Mary thy wife, for she shall bring forth a son. No. Just tell me what to say. Fear not, Mary. Uh, uh, fear not, Mary. For thou hast found... Oh, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. Cherubim? Cherubim, you missed your cue! Huh. Huh? I just didn't peg you as someone who knew the words to the Magnificat. What? I went to Sunday school as a kid. Sorry, I just would have... Annie's really gunning for Director Mountain's job next year, isn't she? Oh, uh, IDK, I, I think she'd settle for the Arbor Day extravaganza as a stepping stone to bigger and better things. Annie likes Christmas. Like, really likes Christmas. So, you're saying I should get her a gift then? Yeah, I'd work on that. I mean, I could just ghost her for the 12 days and reappear on Epiphany. Please find something. You know, I could sell my... We're not doing that. But I've already got the costume. Come in. Um, I'll make tea. Oh, no, it, it's fine, Aunt Carol. Nonsense. Um, I want tea. And it's awkward when I'm the only one holding something. Um, you won't have to ask me again. I've decided to tell you about what's wrong. If you'll keep it in confidence. Of course. When I first saw Tim, I thought he was someone else. That troubles me. Um, a mistake? No, uh, what troubles me is seeing the someone else. Well, who did you think he was? I don't know. Someone like Tim? I don't know. I've, I've never seen his face. He stands up there on the platform above the light and waves at me. Up there? She wouldn't turn around to look out the window, but subtly nodded her head. Above the monorail track, you could see a platform. Have you seen this person before? Yes. The accident I told you about, three days before this man, I, I think it was a man, he appeared. Um, he shouted at me, hello down there, 
and waved his arm. It was at night, so I couldn't see him well. There, there's not much light up there. Monorail Navy is delayed at Harvest Street Station. Uh, no action is required. Oh, what did you do? Well, I, I called back, but he didn't come down. It was pitch dark, so I grabbed a flashlight and went up there, but he was gone. Hmm. Huh. That's strange. Yes. Yes, someone came by and tried to get my attention, but was called away, I, I thought. Not a problem. I messaged the master control at the transportation lobby, and they said that everything was fine. But then I began to hear it. And Carol? I saw the man up there, and the next day, I heard the bell. But there wasn't ever a message. I contacted the transportation lobby, and they said the same thing. No danger, no problems. Oh, well, surely there's a logical explanation for all of this. The ORAC system is supposed to learn, right? It's not just that. The day before the accident, he came back. He was there again, standing up on that platform, screaming at me, Clear the way! Clear the way! A Aunt Carol... But by the time I walked out of my booth and turned the corner to go up the stairs, he was gone. The danger light was on. Mm, you said that the danger light was disconnected. It is. All right. Um, did you contact the station? What was I going to say? Saw a mysterious stranger, hearing odd sounds, weird light in the tunnel. I had sent the same thing for two nights in a row. I couldn't make it a third. The accident was that evening. There may be a logical explanation to all of this. I know you think it's unlikely that these things would occur around the accident, but it's possible that it's just a coincidence. You saw someone which was strange, and then there was an accident which was strange. But there's no correlation. Yes. I was rattled by it, but that's the conclusion I came to afterwards. The man was a coincidence, the bells were a new system I was unfamiliar with, and the light was a reflection. You came to the same conclusion I did, Eve. I've always seen a lot of myself in you. In her current state, I wasn't convinced this was a compliment. Why did you go to the consul? What? Why did you go to the consul? It... Uh, no. It didn't. Aunt Carol, it didn't ring. I know. I know. I, I can always tell the real ones from the other ones. Other ones? I saw the man a second time. Months later, I was working the afternoon shift. The platform was in the long afternoon shadows, but he was there and he was waving and calling out to me. But at the same time, the bell rang and I turned and there was no message and he was gone. What do you mean the other ones? After the man appears up on the platform, the bell rings, but there's no message. But the ring only rings for me. I can hear it, but I, I also know that no one else can. So, aside from the bells, you kept seeing him? I saw him several times after that. I tried to go out and speak with him, but whenever I lost sight, he would disappear. He wasn't waving anymore. His hands were covering his face, and he was crying out, wailing. I wrote it down. What? Chime, please recall note from April 12th. Note from April 12th. I saw him again. He's standing on the platform and calling down to me. I couldn't understand what he was saying, and he wouldn't let me get closer. Tomorrow, I'll check the danger light again to make sure but it is that disconnected. That could be just another... Chime, please read the top progress news story from April 13th. April 13th. A local Progress resident fell from a moving monorail this morning in what Progress Security is referring to as a tragic accident. Oh my god. The woman, identified only as a female 37-year-old worker for UBI Works, did not survive. It was right here, near the mouth of the tunnel. They tell you not to lean against the doors, but some people don't listen. After that, the ringing stopped. 
Oh, okay. And, and before the accidents, when you looked out, this man, Spectre, whatever, it was there. It was there. Both times? Both times. I... I suppose you understand what's troubling me. I looked her in the eye. Was she doubting her own sanity at this point? It could be overwork, it, it could be the loneliness just causing her to imagine what was out there. Maybe some back rationalization for guilt over the accidents. But she'd recorded seeing it the day before. What does it mean? Uh, excuse me? What does it mean that I'm seeing it again? What does it mean that I'm hearing the bell when it's not ringing? Uh, I, I don't know. What's it warning against? There's danger on the monorail line. I know it. It's the third time I've seen it. She stood up and looked out the window. Then her face froze. He's there again. Don't move. Whatever curse this is, it is mine. I don't want it coming after you. That's when I heard a low whistling through the air. Like the wind whipping over the opening of the crevice. Or like a long moan. As soon as I take my eyes off of it, it will be gone. Why not tell me? If you can predict the future, tell me what will happen. I can do something to stop it. If you can't, why are you torturing me like this? Why not go to someone who could do something? Why me? <sighs> Monorail Emerald is having a minor technical malfunction and will be taken off the line at the next exchange. Until then, it will be running at a 14% slowdown. No action required. What am I supposed to tell them? Danger? They'll ask me why. Because I think so? They'd replace me. What else could they do? Why tell me these things if I can't change them? Why not tell me how I could change them instead? I... I'm sorry, Eva. I've laid out my troubles, and if you feel like you need to report me... No, then... no, 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 no. I wouldn't do that. Look, whatever else you may be, you're absolutely fastidious about your job. You couldn't ask for a more capable operator on the line. I mean, the computer itself couldn't do better. Thank you, Eve. Okay, um, I'm going to set aside the reality, or unreality, of what you saw. You're used to being given instructions, and now you believe instead of instructions, you're just being given a warning, correct? Correct. The creature, man, ghost, I don't know, whatever it is. It's not telling me what to do, just that something will happen like it has twice before. Well, then you can't be responsible for it, can you? What do you think it is? Uh, I, I couldn't say. Honestly. I think it's a creation of your mind. I think you're overworked. You should take a vacation. The warning means nothing. <sighs> That's comforting to hear. Um, Monorail Emerald will experience another minor technical malfunction. One of the engines, I assume, we're dispatching the tow train now. Yeah, this may take a minute, Eve. I'll... I'll leave you to it. And leave her to it, I did. I looked into the piercing darkness of the tunnel as I left. For the briefest moment, I thought I saw the glimmer of the disconnected danger light. But I think it may have been reflecting the moon. I wondered as I worked my way back to the city if I had some civic duty to report my aunt. Would I want to be on the monorail when she was running it? And still, the Oryx system seemed to have replaced whatever discretionary role she might have once had.
turning her in seemed dirty, especially after she trusted me. I thought of a middle option. I'd find her a psychiatrist and set up their first meeting. I could keep her secret, help her, and help the city at the same time. Star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Myrrh, I bring its bitter perfume, breathes a life of gathering doom. Sorrow, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in a stone cold tomb. I arrived at the first performance of the Candlelight Processional just at the bit where they started discussing first century tax policy. Then we got to the part with the wise men. And for someone whose arm was twisted into participating, Tim held himself with well, it could only be described as grandeur. Behold, we saw the star in the east. Tim looked off stage and mouthed, Nailed it. Bo had a larger part in this. I'm not sure if there were more angels, prophetic dreams, and divine warnings than I remembered, or if they were just on the brain at the moment. We were skipping over the child genocide to get to the more family-friendly parts. Magi, I bring to you warning. Do not go back to King Herod. Instead, return to your countries by another way. Huh. Another way. Let's suppose for a moment that what Aunt Carol told me was accurate. She first started seeing things after the ORAC system was installed. ORAC was Astute's most serious competitor. Astute was working on an AI that was elegant, communicative, human-like. Orac's AI was clumsy, but they claimed it would be able to do things that seemed impossible. That being said, it made mistakes a human never would. What if it was communicating another way? Talking to the only person who was listening, or for some reason, capable of listening. If that was the case, it was warning her and only her, of a fatal accident days before it occurred. If the crash could be prevented, I could be there to help. If not, I could be a witness. Start dissecting the code. Use Carol as a human radio antenna with whatever crossed wires were accurately predicting what seemed to be random events. I slipped out when everyone stood for the Hallelujah Chorus. I chimed my apologies to Annie and Tim and made my way on the people mover towards Aunt Carol's station. I had given Aunt Carol back her elevator key, so I had to work my way down through the maze of industrial hallways and came out on the catwalk above. As soon as I looked down, I could see that something was wrong. There was a silver metallic tent set up on the tracks. I hurried down the stairway to see what was going on. There was a small crowd gathered. Some monorail workers and... Progress security, by the looks of them. Excuse me, you can't be here. Who are you? Oh, what's going on? I said, you're not allowed here. I'm, uh, Eve Moore? Carol's my aunt. Oh, sorry, I... I didn't know that they'd notified the family. What? Aunt Carol is dead? Why are you here? Just... a premonition, I guess. Well, I'm sorry to have to break it to you. It seems there was an accident. Strangest thing. How did it happen? I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, another fellow from the monorail is over there, though. Uh, he was the one that found her. He might be able to let you know. Is... Something... He... he saw it happen. Oh. Um... I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Who are you? Uh, 
Carol Wood? She was my aunt. Oh, I see. Could you maybe tell me what happened? To be honest, I don't know. She was the most careful person on the line. But Monorail Jade was coming into the exchange here. She wasn't responding, so I sent her a message. I still didn't hear anything from her. But I had this feeling, you know? So I raced here from the barn. I was up on the catwalk and I saw her. Down on the track. Uh, she was standing down there? I, I couldn't believe it. She was always so careful. The monorail was coming. I don't know what she was doing. She should have heard the monorail by then, but she was just looking up at me. I called to her down there and I started waving. Clear the way. Clear the way. I can't claim any knowledge about these events beyond what I've told you here. It may be all a projection, onto false memories, or else a fabulous coincidence, but for the time, I'd like to assume that there's something more than either of those two possibilities. So, without prolonging the conclusion to this story, I would like to make the following observations. Three things are unknown to me. One, how did the artificial intelligence known as Orac communicate with Carol Wood? Two, how did it predict both the accidents themselves and the way in which she would be warned about them? Three, and if I'm being honest, this is the one that keeps me awake at night. Why would a computer want to show you the last thing you'd see the moment before you die? Merry Christmas, everyone. Hark the herald angels This episode of Prototype World of Tomorrow was written and directed by Benjamin Lancaster, based on the short story by Charles Dickens. Eve Moore is played by Callie Wills, and Tim Less is played by Brian Balance. Carol Wood is played by Jan Welch. Annie Moore is Issa Jones. Bo is played by Jerry Skids, and Bonnie is John Sakari. The Progress Security Agent is Hal Bowers, and the Monorail Conductor is Dakota Myers. The chime voice is Jacqueline Thomas. The featured soloist is Teresa Hugh. Theme music by Trash Chan Zotair Zeta. Associate producer Naomi Addison. If you enjoyed this episode and want us to make more, please go onto iTunes and give us a five chime review. Prototype World of Tomorrow is copyright 2020, just a head in a jar, LLC.